So check out Barbershop and the other original programming on Showtime. This crowd is as ready as we are. Coming up, what you've been waiting for. Live from Manchester, England, Kostya Zoo meets Ricky Hatton next. It's the hottest ticket in town. A capacity crowd of about 22,000 here at the MEN Arena in Manchester, England, as IBF junior welterweight champion Kostya Zhu, the undisputed leader of boxing's premier division, defends against number one contender, undefeated hometown sensation, Ricky the Head Manhattan, a night that promises to be electric. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert along with Al Bernstein. Welcome. It's 2 o'clock in the morning here in Manchester, 9 p.m. on the East Coast, back in the USA. I'm still recovering from Castillo Corrales. Yeah. Now this, unbelievable. What's the difference between the perception and the reality here tonight, Al? Quickly, a couple of myths. Kostasu is thought of to be invincible. He's remarkable, even great, but he is human. Secondly, Ricky Hatton, some think, does not have any boxing acumen. He's simply a brawler. That is not really the case. Uh, he brings more to this fight, and so I think we may have a cerebral war like Castillo Corrales. We hope so. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon, Jr. And gentlemen, the time has come for the bout you've all been waiting for. Prepare to welcome the boxers as they make their way to the ring. First, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the challenger from Manchester, England, Ricky the Hitman.
performance unparalleled in boxing today. The pride of Manchester, fueled and inspired by the intense energy of this raucous and passionate crowd. saying Sue, they're saying boo, but he thrives on the challenge. He knew exactly what he was in for tonight. As the booing and the hostility gets stronger, so does Kostya Zhu. As we check the numbers, here's the tail of the tape. The biggest disparity in age, the champion nine years older, the height almost even, slight reach advantage for Zhu. Zhu initially three ounces over at yesterday's weigh-in, right on 45 minutes later. Hatton just under a bit ironic since he'd been criticized for ballooning between fights now ripped and ready. And the key unified rules for this world title affair, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fighters rule to no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecard. So here at the deafening MEN Arena in Manchester, England, we're getting ready for Kostya Zhu versus Ricky Hatton for the IBF 140-pound championship. As we get it back up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Before we begin our action, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I'd like to ask you to please be upstanding for the playing of the national anthems of both Australia and England.
exclusive across the UK on Sky Box Office. And to our boxing fans joining us around the world, a very good evening to you and welcome to the MEN Arena here in Manchester, England, as it's time for the featured bout of the evening, brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network in association with Vlad Wharton's Millennium Events, Sky Box Office, and Showtime, as sponsored by Parliament Vodka and Three. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation, the President Marion Mohammed, the Supervisor Rob Scott, along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the steward in charge, Charles Giles. Introducing at this time are three judges scoring this bout for Brinkside. From Oneida Castle, New York in the United States, Don Ackerman. From Paris, France, Alfred Asaro. From San Sebastian, Spain, Manuel Marichalar. And our third man of the ring, the referee in charge, working in this his 91st world title bout, Dave Paris. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight or Light Welterweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Manchester, England, it's showtime! Introducing to you first on my right, the challenger fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing blue trunks with black and silver trim, proudly representing his home of Manchester, England. He weighed in at nine stone, 13 and three quarter pounds, or 139 and three quarter US pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign. 28 big wins coming by way of knockout tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the challenger, but holds the WBU Light Welterweight Championship. Please welcome the sensational IBF number one ranked light welterweight contender. Here is boxing's pride of Manchester, introducing the undefeated Ricky the Hitman. And his opponent across the ring, the defending a champion on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing a black trunks, fighting out of Sydney, Australia, by way of Zeroff, Russia. He weighed in at 10 stone even, or right at the limit of 140 US pounds. His record stands at 31 wins, one defeat, one no decision, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former undisputed world champion. Here is the two-time and current IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, introducing Kostya. Once again, a referee in charge, Dave Paris, now to give instruction. You both in the dressing room, boys, you know what I expect. Keep your punches on target, punch with the knuckle part of the glove. If one of you goes down, the other go to the further and shoot your corner. Break when I tell you to, defend yourself at all times. Good luck to you both. Will it be an unforgettable night of boxing here in Manchester, England? We're certainly off to a maddening start all week long ricky hatton was telling us we haven't seen half of what he's got insisting his boxing ability and defense were underrated well now is his moment of truth to show costa zoo and the world he immediately get into a grapple if zoo is on hatton will have to to be at his sharpest he'll need the performance of his life as they continue to wrestle here out of the gate this first round, very, very important. Costa Zoo often lets people do very well in the first round. Mitchell and Judah did very well. Of course, he knocked them out shortly after that. He lures you in. And remember, Hatton was knocked down by a counter right hand by Eamon 
McGee early in the fight. The right hand of Zhu is what we want to look for early. Ricky Hatton can't afford even the slightest mistake. That's when Zhu strikes swiftest and hardest. And you're right about Zhu. He can lull you into a false sense of confidence. Hatton is jabbing his way in, which is a good idea. However, he is not moving laterally on the inside, and he's making himself an easy target for Zhu's counterpunches. Ordinarily, Hatton may throw more punches, but Zhu hits harder. And his punch is not only strong, it's well-timed and accurate, quick and straight. Hatton, no doubt, on the lookout for Zhu's right hand. His money punch. This fight, while it will be all action, and you can see, is a cerebral war. Caution for hitting behind the head. A warning from Dave Paris to Hatton. Some roughhouse tactics early by the hometown Hatton. Right! For Ricky Hatton, being on the inside and smothering Zhu is a good idea early. He has to get through these early rounds. He's got to get this fight into the fourth and fifth, where presumably his body attack and aggression and youth can help him. A very rugged physical start to this fight. A minute left in the opening round. And again, Dave Paris with words. <laughs> Time Hatton even comes close to landing. Right. Oh, no. said he wanted to keep the fight from a distance. Here comes Ricky Hatton. You can just see the wheels turning in Costa Zoo's head as he looks for the big counter punch. And he's landed some very nice ones in round one, not the punch yet. Zhu, ordinarily not a fast starter, so you can't always go by this first round. And yet this has been a very even and fiercely fought first round. But again, as you point out, Hatton's gotten a few things done. This was a, a rough first round. And here's where Hatton ends up hitting behind the head and uh, gets a warning from Dave Paris. Hatton wants to make this a rough house fight on the inside if he cannot be at mid range. Now, here's where Hatton got to be very aggressive, kind of bold. Zoo against the ropes didn't land anything of consequence, but exerted his his control for a moment or two. Second up, round two. There's the notion that if Hatton can get through about four or five rounds, the pendulum might swing, with the hope that the champion's age and Hatton's youth would become factors. And more cautioning from Dave Paris, who's trying to take control here. Hatton, back to work. To say that Ricky Hatton went to school on this, just moments before he came out here, he was still watching films of Costa Zoo in his dressing room. Let's see if it helped him at all. Hatton trying to smother Zoo with that suffocating approach. Firing away. The usual high work rate, high punch volume. The first really good body shot Ricky Hatton has landed. He has not gone there as much as we have thought earlier. He's working well on the inside here against Zoo. So Hatton, his strategy, jumping right on Zoo here in the second round. This is very smart by Ricky Hatton and Dave Paris not jumping in to break them. Hatton looking to wear Zoo out. Number two is 35. He insists he's stronger and smarter with age. 
that the zoo at 35 would destroy the zoo at 25. He says he's a fresh 35 because of the inactivity. But Hat is hoping that zoo gets old before his eyes. Hat missing. But keeping up the pace and dictating. The distance Ricky Hatton has right now is perfect, especially for these early early rounds. Short crisp uppercuts by Hatton that are scoring. Zhu would want Dave Paris to break them now, but he's not doing it. The upset-minded Ricky Hatton storming. Zoo has not been able to keep Hatton at long distance in this fight, even medium distance. Remember, he told us on the inside, it's it's not a, an interesting fight. It's you can't get anything done. Well, he's wrong. Ricky Hatton's getting something done on the inside. Bouncing around, showing the energy of this crowd. Ricky Hatton coming forward. Inside, Ricky Hatton has done a superb job landing uppercuts, working the body fairly well. And the point is, just keeping Costa Zoo, look at those uppercuts, keeping Costa Zoo from hitting him with those counter punches as he comes in. This was the strategy we assumed Ricky would employ. It's worked very well. And even in the center of the ring, when he pushes him back, he can, when he gets him against the ropes, Ricky Hatton is very effective. And one of the keys to that sequence, Steve, is that Hatton made him miss as he came in. That's important. In addition to using his fists, Hatton using his body to push and pull Kostya Zoom. What a start to the third round. The first round was, was close. The second round was all Ricky Hatton being tenacious. A bundle of energy who looks to dominate. Let's see if Zhu can turn things here in the third. Zhu is counterpunching much better early in this round, and that was a monstrous right hand. He woke up Costa Zhu. Success, fairly successful, though not in this round. He's coming in much too off balance. He's not jabbing his way in and, and, and just being balanced. When he leans like that, he'll get hit with something big by Zhu. And remember, Zhu said, the longer this fight goes, the more chance for Hatton to make a mistake, for Zhu to land the right. And all it takes is a split second. We saw it against Jack Judah, against Shambay Mitchell. He had Mitchell down four times. Hits coming perilously close. Hey, Paris had something to say about that. A little left hook to the head by Sue. Zhu, a lot of power, though, behind him. Zhu, his left hook is not his money punch, but he has a pretty good one. He's thrown it a lot in this fight. Not that he came in here planning to do it, to throw Hatton off, because Hatton expected the right hand. And he has that educated jab, but Hatton is keeping him from throwing. Finally, a good left hook to the body by Hatton, but it's around Costa Zhu has, for the most part, controlled. Hatton continues to suffocate Zhu. That left hook sticking to the body by Sue, showing a little more confidence all of a sudden. And there's 
his hat and rip into the body on the inside. He has not gotten too much into the body. Both throw debilitating hooks to the body. That right hand blocked by Hatton. Zoo has really picked up the pace in this third round. And it's now is the moment, I think, when we're going to find out something about Ricky Hatton. Well, Hatton looking to finish strong here in the third as the final seconds tick down. Push him and shove him, he'll use the same amount of energy as him. You know what I mean? Just stay on him, but sometimes he's to the side and let him fucking go through you. You know what I'm saying? He might stumble through you there, then you can catch him with something. Yeah. You just gotta stay with this and wait for him to dwindle a little bit, you know what yeah. I mean? Make sure get a little bit slower. Mm. Just keep chipping away. But if you just keep pushing and pushing the bullet again. Kostasu early in the round lands this lead right hand. That is precisely what he would like to do more of in this fight, and he did unload that punch several times in the third round. And is he just a right hand puncher? Uh uh. Look at that excellent body work, and then he will come with this superb uppercut that stunned Hatton momentarily. It shows you the versatility of Zhu. There was some concern about whether he'd cut a history of cutting, although not in the last eight or nine fights. Patton continues to apply the intense pressure. I don't remember a fight in which we've seen so many effective uppercuts. In fact, we might go back, though, to Castillo and Corrales. They both used uppercuts, but these fighters both going for it. Patton just walked into one. left hooks. Here's a good one on the inside by Hatton. Upstairs. Missing with that. You know, Ricky Hatton's getting away with lunging in and, and putting himself into a position where he can be hit with counter punches, but so far hasn't been hit with one that has hurt him. And Kostya Zhu, an exquisite counter puncher. Zhu very patient. who came back from a 22-month layoff to defeat Shambe Mitchell in convincing fashion in November. And now, in this fight with Ricky Hatton. Only nine rounds in three years for Costa Zhu. Hatton believes that will make him rusty. Zhu, of course, says it makes him rusty. We'll find out who's right. Both have landed excellent right hands in this round. We already have our answer on Ricky Hatton. He can hang with Costa Zoo. He's doing it pretty darn well. Oh, he just got tagged with a left hand at Hatton. But that's the difference between being hit with Costa Zoo's best left hook and his best right hand. You get hit with his best right hand like that, and you're down. And then Hatton digging to the body with the left hand. Hatton's been down only once in his career against Eamon McGee here in Manchester in June 02, and it happened in the first round. Came back to win by decision. Very close fourth round. Zoo has gotten a lot done in the last minute and a half after a good start by Hatton. Right! Zoo showing the jab. Shot by Hatton. Well tied. And Hatton with a little poke after the bell.
Yes, sir. <laughs> mate, we can't be on the raves, Cos. We've got to bang him onto the big right hand, mate. We've got to get in with it. Bought with something, Cos. We'll just faint with it and then bang. Ricky Hatton on the inside lands a nice right hand against uh, Costa Zoo, a short right hand. And he's been effective with that punch. We expected more left hooks from Hatton and to be countered by the Zoo right. But the right hand's been effective for Hatton. Here's Costa Zoo and Hatton hitting at the bell, but uh, no anger apparently. And they both come in throwing, winging. To begin round five, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Waterway Championship. Cut cook to the head by Kostya Zhu. You know, the interesting thing is Ricky Hatton has had a six-month layoff. That's the longest of his career, but in his case, you can really make the case that he said he needed that rest. He fights a very strong pace every year, and he felt that that was going to help him prepare better for this fight. There was a concern over his weight between fights. He's actually 147 now. Kostya Zhu is 149 and a half. IBF rules, they weigh in again the morning of the fight. Now there's IBF combinations. There's combinations from Hatton. If we see in the fifth, sixth, and seventh round that Hatton, the younger man, starts throwing more and more combinations and less from Zhu, that's an interesting sign, and it may tell us something about whether Zhu can keep up this pace. Under two minutes remaining in the fifth. Here's a look at press row Ron Borges from the Boston Globe, John Dillon from the Daily Express here in the UK, Colin Hart from The Sun. Of course, those are, are unofficial. They've got Hatton by majority uh, decision to this point. Hatton's having himself a very nice fifth round. Zhu has not been able to counter him as he comes in, although there was a nice right hand, but it's not hurting Hatton as he comes in when he does get hit with those punches. Stylistically, this fight is working for the most part in Ricky Hatton's favor. And you know, ironically, Hatton isn't showing as much of the boxing skill as he did against Ben Tacky. He's been more of a brawler here, and yet he's getting away with it. Kostya Zhu got here a couple of weeks ago to acclimate to the UK timings. Very odd start time for this fight, 2 a.m. And Zhu missing wildly there. You know what was interesting about that sequence? It was Kostya Zhu initiating action, which shows you that he's thinking, I've got to make something happen. And if he does too much initiating, it takes him out of his game plan. So the plot is definitely thickening here. Kostya Zhu told us his punch was built for this fight. But so far, we haven't seen it. Capacity crowd of about 22,000 here at the Evian Arena in Manchester, England. This place sold out two and a half hours after tickets went on sale back in March. You're not quite getting enough with your yeah, own yeah, punch yeah. because you've got to stay close. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're just pushing him straight yeah. on, just round, but stay on him, round, and get people got up inside. Mm. Well, you stick to him like glue. You're not using your better quality of stuff from the inside, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can still sell him and get up and cut inside. You can get him really close. You've got to chip away in, but still, it's the same. He's still trying to tear the off. And he'll come out with a fucking big bomb again. Oh, got out, yeah. Yeah. crowd here at the the fabled MEN, the Manchester Evening News Arena. Ricky Hatton firing away. Had off balance, bouncing off the ropes. 
That was the best left hook Ricky Hatton has landed to the head in this fight, and it pushed Costa Zoo back. The irony of this fight is Ricky Hatton hasn't been as technically sound as we thought he would need to be, but guess what? He is getting the job done with sheer determination and pressure. And I'll tell you what, on the inside, if Dave Paris was breaking them more, it would it would have hurt Ricky Hatton. There he gets in, but he's letting them fight on the inside, probably rightfully so. The straight ahead, Ricky Hatton marching on, missing with the left, but just continues to throw. High volume, as always, tenacious, ferocious. Say this is a flat performance by Costa Zoo, but he's not absolutely at his best. And we saw him against Octa Erickel, even against James Leha, where he was just a little subpar. And the problem is, if you're a little subpar against a 26-year-old who feels he can beat you and it gives you constant pressure, you might have a problem. 26-year-old who is eager, hungry. That was the big hope here in Manchester that Zoo would be somewhat flat at the same time Hatton elevating his game. Right. Now, as well as Hatton's doing in some of these rounds, one thing he's not doing is getting good body shots in. I know he wants to, to weaken the older fighter for later in this bout. So that's one thing I would think they would really want him to do in addition to those uppercuts they're asking from the inside. There was absolutely no trash talking before this fight. Mutual respect 100%. The loving is over as the jab starts to find a home along with the, the right hand by Zoo. That was a telling sequence. A jab and a right hand landed by Zoo, but it didn't slow down Hatton's assault. And then he was able to land good body shots. All of a sudden, Zoo picking up some steam here. Late in round six, Hatton comes marching in. That's the good counter punching we expected from Zoo, and it might be enough to get him weight right back into this round. Another caution from Dave Paris to Hatton. Watch the head. Hatton missing with the right hand. Good work by Costa Zoo in the last 45 seconds of this round. It might be enough to win him the round. He's gotten a better distance during this portion. That's why he's able to land these counter punches on the outside. Two, all of a sudden looking very energized here as we head for the bell. Ricky Hatton working on the inside against Costa Zoo, pushing against the ropes. And there's a good kind of half hook, half jab, and a good work to the body as well. Now, the early part of the round, Hatton was very, very effective, even landing some excellent right hands. That one kind of pushed Costa Zoo back. But you see Zoo doing some counter punching there. As the round wore on, Costa Zoo was able to do some very effective but here, look what happens. Costa Zoo Hatton keeps coming after a good straight left and right is landed by Zoo, and that's a very interesting point in this fight. That's got to be discouraging to Costa Zoo as he unleashed the right. Ricky Hatton unfazed when it landed. I wonder if you can make an argument that the ropes saved Zoo from a knockdown about 20 seconds into that sixth round. Round seven, scheduled for 12 for the IBF 140-pound title. Ricky Hatton facing the number one junior welterweight in the world in Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo almost a four-to-one favorite in Las Vegas by the odds makers coming into this fight. So this one really raising some eyebrows. The last time Costa Zoo had to go into the seventh round was in May of 2002 against Ben Tacky, a fight he won in 12. So he's in some territory, hasn't been in for a while. Of course, the injuries that kept him off for 22 months, a big part of that. Press row becoming intriguing. Ron Borges has it even. I have it exactly the way Ron Borges does. I have it even at 57 57. And now we have to start talking about whether the judges will be influenced by this crowd. Not even 
bothering to defend as he comes in. It's interesting now he's taking counter punches, but it's almost as if he's not worried about being hurt. But Kostasu doing some pretty good counter punches now. Oh, good hook by Hatton. Hatton upstairs with a combination as Sue just clubs away at Hatton's head. Finally, it's broken up. Left hook up there by, by Kostya Zhu. That snapped Hatton back momentarily. But then he comes back forward. If you're just tuning in, no knockdowns. Right hand by Ricky Hatton, but it didn't have full impact. Hatton's punches are a little wide, a little looping. He's not getting good leverage into a lot of the shots, but he's continuing to press forward. Good shot. Straight right hand by, by Costa Zhu, but it did phase Hatton. Zhu has countered very well this round, though. If the judges are paying attention, this is Costa Zhu's round, despite the aggression of Ricky Hatton. A mouse under the left eye of Costa Zhu. Shot Hatton is down, but they're calling it a slip. Let's see if Paris is calling it a slip or a knockdown. He waved it off. Well, that may have been a low blow. We'll have to wait and see, but either way. So no knockdown. on the uh, referees here in the UK, and that's why we can't hear what he's saying, which we normally do. Hatton with a flurry just before the bell landed with a, a left hook to the head. You've got to slip his jab and use your you're coming in. So, so snap his head back a little bit, then you can get in. I want you to look, I want you to get him back to the ropes where he's not as dangerous, yeah. but then you've got to do your work. Do what you do best and give him angles stepping round. But don't go too far out, don't give anyone to punch back. But now you've got to get started giving him something. You'll get him to the head. You're not, you're not when he's throwing shots, you're not slipping and counting yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Slip and bang that jab. Here's where Costa Zhu landed a left hook. It may have been low, we'll see. And I think it knocked Ricky Hatton down. Well, it was kind of the belt line. Might have been a little low. Hatton went down. You have to either call that a knockdown or you have to definitively say it was a low punch and as a result you're going to give him some time. Now we can't hear Dave Paris, so maybe he did. But uh, uh, if that had been a little higher, it would have been a knockdown. It looked like he was right on the belt and it was called. You could have made an argument for a knockdown. Yes, you could. Round eight. We're headed into some very interesting territory in this fight. It's obviously got to be close on the scorecard. Who can step it up right now? Good left landed a moment ago by Hatton. If Hatton's jab was working a little better in this fight, he would really be able to get some things done. Good hook again by Hatton. Hatton continues to look impressive. Even if it may not be the right strategy against a guy like Costa Zhu, as you point out. Well, you know, it's the right strategy. It's just that he's not employing it as we thought he would have to to win this fight. His defense is a little lax. His punches are a little wide. He's not moving his head as much. And yet, with all that, he's getting enough done to get on the inside to hurt Costa Zhu and hit him. So it's pure aggression by him. What we thought was that Costa Zhu would stop him with a big counterpunch when he was going to do that. But that hasn't really happened. I should say the perceived strategy. Yeah. Left hook there to the head by Hatton that scored. He is getting the hook in now a lot. Now, the big thing you still have to say, though, is I think he wanted to get more body work done early in the fight. That would slow you down in these later rounds. But boy, look at the jab of Hatton. When that punch works for him, he's in business. He's had a good round, Ricky Hatton. There is no question that Ricky Hatton, even before this thing ends, demonstrating, yep. signaling that he belongs on the world stage with Costa Zhu.
He's arrived in the junior welterweight division. Let the naysayers stop with Ricky Hatton. He belongs. Less than a minute remaining in round eight as they continue to sing and chant here at the MEN Arena. Many people would have been surprised even to have Ricky Hatton in the hunt in the eighth round, and he's certainly in the hunt. Zhu not precise with his counter punching in this round. A push by Zhu. Is that a sign of some desperation by Costa Zhu or frustration? And back comes Ricky Hatton. A countering straight right by Zhu. Patton has fought every second of every round and not given Costa Zhu a chance to rest. He said that would take its toll on Zhu. It might be starting to right now. some punches as you're coming in. Yeah. You block, you're blocking us and slipping them in, you're just falling in and not doing that yourself. You're stopping his work, but you're not getting off any of yourself. <laughs> just slip and slide as he's using it and just bang the jab in him. that screw shot. He'll snap his head back, then you can give him something, then you can give him something. Yeah, yeah, You've got to start coming Ricky around. Ricky Hatton's payoff punches head. his left hook. He's starting to land it with some regularity. There's a nice uppercut on the inside, and then the left hook just whistles past Costa Zoo's head, but he is able to land that left hand very effectively on the inside. Ten seconds, Golden. Zhu kind of pushed Ricky Hatton down to the canvas. Is this some frustration? Is it, uh, is it fatigued by Costa Zhu? Either way, their feet got tangled up and down went Hatton. Luckily for Hatton, he wasn't injured. And Zhu comes out fast to start round nine. on the inside by Ricky. You know, it's turned into more of a battle of hooks than we thought, Steve, and that's not good for Costa Zhu. He needed the right hand to get there. And, uh, and you know, I said he's not throwing too many left hooks to the body hand. Maybe that's by design. He doesn't want to get countered over on the top by the right hand of Costa Zhu. So it could be a good ploy on his part. The hook would favor the hometown hero. His signature punch. We talked about the crowd and its effect. As the fight wears on for Ricky Hatton, not bad to hear 22,000 people cheering for you. It, is, it could be inspiration as he heads down the stretch in a battle of, of uh, attrition. And right now, in round nine, just as in round eight, Ricky Hatton is the fresher of the two fighters and the more active of the two. A news flash they traded right hands and Hatton's was better I didn't ever expect to hear myself say that during this fight wow that's interesting I have to fight dead even uh, at 76 76 but right you can make the case for Zoo being ahead by a point or two they feel the tide has turned the last three rounds for Costa Zoo they've got it Unanimous decision for Zoo. See, the part I disagree with is I think Hatton's done well in two. I think he's won two of the last three rounds. He's certainly winning this one. We approach the final minute of round nine. This has been an excellent round for Hatton. And Hatton looking as fresh as in the first round. This is a very, very close fight. Make no mistake about it, but it's there to be won by either man. I asked Costa Zhu the other day if he thought he needed to knock Hatton out in Manchester, and he said it doesn't matter. You think, you think he's going to rethink that answer right now? Absolutely. Come on, come on. Paris cautioning Costa Zoo about low blows. Oh, oh. A, body shot, a body shot by Hatton. And it's not a knockdown. He's saying it's low. That punch is very low by Ricky Hatton. Oh, 
He's asking Sue if he's okay, and Sue kind of shook his head as if to say, not really. Now, he can get up to five minutes here if he wants to shake this off. And if I was Costa Zoo, I'd take as long as I could. That's the kind of a punch, legal or not legal, that can turn a fight around. Gil Clancy, my, the great trainer and broadcaster, always said to his guys, they hit you low, go hit him low. That's exactly what Ricky Hatton did, and he has had a lot more force than Zoo. Well, let's see how Zoo retaliates now. As Dave Paris brings them together, It says no more shenanigans. That could be a seminal moment in this fight. Ricky Hatton is treating it that way. So Hatton down from a low blow earlier, and now Zoo here in round nine. Still the same, you say, but get them shots to the head. Slip it, bang, bam, that jabbing as you're coming in. It'll give you some time to get in position to do some other work. Come on, come on. Come on, just blow up his head. Fucking drench him in it. Do you understand? Yeah. You got fucking three, three rounds. Costa Zoo goes down low. That was the first low punch. And that was, then he got a, uh, a warning from Dave Paris. Ricky Hatton, however, not to be outdone. Comes back and he throws his left with a vengeance load. That was almost pinpointed by Ricky Hatton. You can't tell me that wasn't intentional. That was south of the border and much lower than Zeus offering earlier. And no point deducted, but it was the first one of its kind from Hatton. See the wow. The wealth under the eye of Costa Zoo. Hatton comes out winging. Round 10. Both rabbit punching now. Very rough house. The warning from Dave Paris, a left hook to the net by Ricky Hatton, a lunging hook. Zeus said he was going 12 rounds easily in sparring with young sparring partners, saw no problem in going 12. So we're headed into the championship rounds now, and it will be up to Zoo to show a little more energy than he has in the last round or so. Zoo momentarily put off balance by that overhand right by Hatton. pressure by Ricky Hatton. And even if it's not all effective, it is dictating the pace and tempo of this fight. It was being billed as the fight of Ricky Hatton's life. It's turning into the fight of Costa Zoo's life. He's not faced this in a long, long time. He's being pushed to the brink. And when was the last time you could say that about Costa Zoo? Good uppercut on the inside by Zoo, but it doesn't deter Hatton. He keeps coming. Great right hand. Now, the interesting thing is, Zeus doing some pretty good counter punching, but I don't know if it's enough to be winning in this round because Hatton is also working well, especially on the inside. No let up from Hatton is pre usual. Hatton has not thrown the uppercut. Nice right. He has not thrown the uppercut on the inside as much as they want in the last couple of rounds. And that would be a big weapon for him. More pressure from Hatton. Zoo clear across the ring. It's a 20-foot ring. There's the jab by, by Hatton, countering straight right by Zoo. But Hatton unfazed, presses on. And you know the perception of the way this fight is being fought. Even if Zoo lands enough counter punches to think maybe he could win the round, it's the constant pressure of Hatton and the fact that he's pushing the champion back that may help Hatton in the score. Great right hand that landed by Costa Zoo, but Ricky Hatton all over Zoo. Tremendous uppercut may have hurt Zoo. A barrage by Ricky Hatton, right hand landed to the chin. Sequence by Hatton, another straight right hand. Do you see Hatton push him off? It's almost like an act of bravado, saying, hey, I'm here and I'm taking control of this fight. Right. And Hatton landing a right just before the bell.
half a few rounds, mate, making this. Yeah. It's a good thing, because I'm still looking for nothing. Cost to be made. Yeah. Ricky Hatton working on the inside, bullying Kostasu. There's the uppercut that has been so effective for him. And the counter, look at the body work. The difference is Hatton is throwing many more combinations than Kostasu and a blistering right hand lands to the head of Kostasu. Now, that was interesting because Kostasu landing from the outside, but it doesn't really deter Hatton. He throws his own right at the end of the round. The championship rounds, round 11. Now, round 10 was scored by the official judges could be pivotal in this fight. The pressure from Ricky Hat had to get on the attack. Pushes Sue back with a straight right to the chin. Sue with almost a dazed look on his face. You know, Costa Zoo was insistent that the longer this fight went, the more likely Hat would make the one mistake that would allow him to knock him out. Now, maybe he still will, but he hasn't so far. Good work by Zoo for, the, for a moment. Zoo, perhaps, thinking that way, waiting for that magical moment. He could have waited too long. Now, Hatton has walked into a few of those good counter punches in this round. A look at the press row scoring. I have it 96-94 for Ricky Hatton. We are headed to a close decision. It is that close. to pull out a decision in Manchester. Good right hand by Hatton. The last half of this round, a very important and pivotal time in this fight. Because the first part of this round, very close. Remember, Costa Zou, the champion, very difficult for the challenger, even on his home turf, to pull out a victory in a close fight over the champion. Who would have ever thought Ricky had could walk in and throw sweeping left hooks like that, eschew defense completely, and not get hit by counter punches by Costa Zoo. Final minute of round 11. Ricky Hatton, the underdog, for the first time in his 38th fight career. show here against the man considered supreme at 140 over the last decade. This will be a very difficult round to score. A lot of pressure from Hatton, some good counter punching by Costa Zou. Who did the better work? And who has the most left for round 12? Wow. Ricky Hatton. Stumble by Hatton. And Costa Zoo did nothing to take advantage of that. He's a tired fighter. So is Hatton, I think. This fight right now is a lot about Ricky Hatton doing very well. It's also about Costa Du slowing down at age 35. And that's to take nothing away from Hatton's performance. It's been superb. Go, go!
so close, it's astonishing that Costa Zoo did not come out for that last round. You would have thought he would have done so, but obviously he was either hurt or injured. We'll find all that out. What a moment for Ricky Hatton. Carol and Ray had the parents of Ricky Hatton embracing Matthew Hatton, the, the brother, family, and friends rejoicing at ringside for Ricky Hatton as Costa Zoo doesn't come out for the 12th round in a very close fight. This is one of those boxing stories that will have a big afterlife. What an upset in Manchester. Years ago, Lloyd Hunnigan upset Donald Curry in a fight that no one except those in Britain thought he could win. This one, like that, but of much bigger magnitude. Ricky Hatton administering a punishing assault throughout 11 rounds on Costa Zoo, and he is victorious. What an improbable ending. And of course, as he lives the joy here, Ricky Hatton, he told us before the fight, he's, he's watching Sky TV, and they were talking about how if he won, he would be in the pantheon of great athletes in Britain. And he said, it was hard for me to even imagine that being the case. Well, right now, it's reality. He's such a down-to-earth kid. He can't believe the attention he garners. He can't believe it himself. There are three franchises in this city, Manchester United, Manchester City, and Ricky Hatton. play what happened in the corner of Kostya Zoo to help us explain the thinking that that occurred. Kostya Zoo embracing with with the winner Ricky Hatton the hitman has hit the jackpot. He is on top of the boxing world. His date with destiny turns into a victorious reality as he upsets Kostya Zoo. Synonymous with 140 pound supremacy the better part of the last 10 years and one of the best of the world coming in at any weight Hatton remains undefeated now 39 and 0 a quick point Ricky Hatton trained more at 2 a.m. in the morning than Costa Zoo did Costa Zoo refused to train his change his training schedule I wonder did that have an impact on Costa Zoo in this fight and was that part of the reason why Hatton was fresher during the course of this match. It's a one thought. Well Ricky Hatton enjoying his coming out party. 16 and 0 in Manchester. He's the new IBF junior welterweight champion. Zoo goes to 31 and 2 with one no decision. Ending a 13 fight win streak dating back to 1997 when Hatton lost to Vin when Zhu lost to Vince Phillips. Zhu being acknowledged by the crowd now. Ricky Hatton joining Vince Phillips, the only fighters to beat Costa Zhu. After the announcement from the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. We'll endeavor to find out exactly what went on in that corner between the 11th and 12th round for Costa Zoo. Well, let's see what this T-shirt says for Ricky Hatton. No doubt to be saluted momentarily by this sellout crowd. Yes, indeed, there is only one Ricky Hatton. He is the new IBF Junior Welterweight Champion. Surprising, shocking Kostya Zoo. He turned the Junior Welterweight division upside down tonight. There's no question there are other big fights in this division to be held in the next month or two, but this one sets the tone.
Dave Hatton and Sue come together to pose for pictures. Kostya Zoo suffering his first loss in about eight years. We'll give you the scoring as soon as it's all tabulated so you know who exactly was ahead at the time of the, the stoppage. At the time, Zoo decided not to continue. I had a hat in the head 106 to 104. Yep. Here's Hatton's reaction when he hears it's over. Ladies Here we go. Jimmy. This has been stopped at the end of the round number 11. Our referee in charge, Dave Paris, stops the contest upon suggestion of the corner. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, and now the new IBF light welterweight champion of the world, Ricky the Hitman Hatton. Playing Blue Moon Until before the, the fight. Here's Hatton. I always said I'd be number one. And you know what? You, me loyal fans, deserve it as much as me. We did together tonight. And I tell you what. There's only one word I can use for your support tonight, and that was legendary. God bless you all. I mean it. They love Ricky Hatton here in Manchester. And I think you'll agree. He's not done. If I can be half the champion, Kostya Zoo was, and I've been doing well, so give Kostya a great champion. A round of applause, please, for me. Hi, England. Can you be quiet for a little while? <laughs> At least for the end of the fight. <laughs> Thank you. You know... I'm proud man. I am very, very proud man. So, and I'm... Uh, I'm not saying that it's the end of my career. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe no. But I'm saying that today I lost to the better fighter. And it's not shame for me to say this, honestly, because uh, uh, you know I'm a very strategic fighter. Uh, I'm playing lots of things. I'm playing lots of things for this fight. But uh, today Ricky was better than me in any sh everywhere. And I'm doing this boxing for 27 years. As I said, I'm very proud, Ricky. Good, God bless you. Uh, and as I said to you before. Any help from me, always welcome it. Wow, very gracious forthright address to the crowd by Kostya Zhu in defeat. This is what happened in the Kostya Zoo corner before he decided to stop. You hear me? You can't fucking rest in time. Any time you you've got to get some room and keep on punching. In there. You can't stop now. You hear me? He's fucked. 
You just got to, you've got to drag this out of him now. Come on, Nicky, you've got to pull it out. In, huh? Just keep on throwing fucking punches, but don't smother it. I don't care how tired you are, you can't rest inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK? You want to work this bastard now? It's the yours, you've got to just grab it from him. You can't let him get any fucking... You can't let him get any room. Yeah? You're going to do this? Put it back. Come on, Come on you can do this. You can fight through this. You can fight through this. I've done it before. Let's take this fucking title. Come on, man. Come on, man. Well, as you can hear, Costa Zoo was being urged on by his trainer, Johnny Lewis. Don't show me my face. But Costa Zoo had other ideas, obviously. And uh, he is now standing by with our Al Bernstein for some post-fight reaction. Costa Zoo, uh, gracious to the New champion Ricky Hatton, now gracious in defeat and coming uh, ringside here to talk to our microphones on Showtime. So as Al Bernstein gets set, off to my right with uh, Kostya Zoo. We'll send it over to Al Bernstein. Al, take it. Thank you, Steve. We're here with Costa Zoo. The first obvious question is a very tough night. What prompted you and your corner to stop the fight? I know Johnny Lewis suggested you stop it. Uh, I think the first suggestion came, I think, a couple of rounds previous, but I was, still was all right. Uh, in 11 rounds, I knew, actually, it's nearly impossible for me to win. Really? Even though the, some of the scores looked like they were fair, could have been fairly close. You thought you were behind that far. I think I was behind. You know, I've always been fair to myself. And uh, I thought I've been probably four, three, four points behind. And uh, I've been hurt a couple times. So you were hurt several times in this fight? Not hurt, hurt. But it wasn't really the best feeling ever. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't been the, that much tight or exhausted for ease and ease and ease and I can't answer why I've been one of the best training camp I ever had I was in the best in the best shape of my life and something was wrong I mean probably it is Costa let me ask you 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 said you would not change your training to train so that you might take advantage of the two o'clock start you think that had any impact on you I don't think so I don't think so everything was all right uh, you just were flat during the fight. It's just, just a flat, yeah. It wasn't me. Uh, you know, I'm throwing the jab fast. This time I couldn't even throw in the jab properly. I don't know why. I can't answer why. Have to see the fight and uh, realize, think, uh, and decide, make a decision. You are 35 years old and you talk about making a decision. Are you going to contemplate the idea of whether you want to continue with your career? Oh, first of all, back home. If you're not going to win, I'm still going to not decide it. Same thing. Yeah. I want to come home and. Uh, Make a, uh, make a good think about it and uh, make a decision. How surprised were you that Hatton was able to get inside, get past the counter punching, and do the damage on the inside that he did? Me too. <laughs> I'm surprised too. <laughs> but it's happened. Happened to, you know, he was the better man tonight. Would um, you want a rematch with him? <sighs> right now it's going to be just emotions. And I don't want to save his emotions. I want to make a cool mind and then make a decision. You've had some extraordinary fights. We've shown them here on Showtime. And you've been a great champion. And uh, your graciousness in the ring, I think, uh, demonstrated a lot what you're about. Look, it's happened. It's happened to anyone. Uh, let, let's talk for just a moment to make sure in the corner. Was it Johnny Lewis that suggested that the fight be stopped and you acquiesced to it? Yeah, Johnny suggested me that uh, to stop the fight. He, he asked me first, do you want to continue? For some time, I didn't, any, didn't make any answers. And probably he made a decision that uh, it's the right decision for me to stop it. And uh, honestly, I did not really complain too much myself. <laughs> Obviously. It, it, Hatton, when he got inside, was able to use those uppercuts. He did some pretty good body work. What was the biggest problem he presented to you during this fight? It's not him, it's me again. I made a wrong fight. You couldn't keep your distance, is that part of the problem? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm staying in the ropes. I didn't know why I stayed close to him. I did. I don't know why. Really, so it just, once he imposed his will and got on the inside, you just weren't able for some reason to get the distance? I thought, you, you want to do this way? Let's do it. 
But it's the wrong things. And your right hand, you were never able to quite land that punch the way you wanted to. I never really caught him right on the chin. Uh, he had very good defense, and uh, he worked very hard to make on this fight, and uh, he deserved the win. What did you two say to each other in the ring? It, it appeared you had some very gracious exchanges. Look, I had to uh, offer him my help anytime he wants, really, because he's a tremendous guy. He a role model for the sport, and uh, I'm the same person, and uh, I want to help the good guys. Well, if you say goodbye to the sport, uh, there will be many people that will miss you, and uh, you've left quite a legacy. Oh, we'll see. All right, thank you, Costa. Thank you. Costa Zhu, a uh, tremendous effort even in defeat, uh, gracious to be sure. Let's take a listen, if we can, to what happened in between the rounds when this fight was stopped by Johnny Lewis. Let's take a listen. I'm going to stop it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no more, Eagle. No more. Oh, okay, last round. Uh, I'm going to stop now. Last round. Last round. No more. What a... Come on, Eagle. You've got to return to him. What are you going to do? So now, upon hearing it for a second time, uh, a lot clearer that it was the trainer, Johnny Lewis, who was suggesting to Kostya Zhu no more. If you don't want to continue, don't continue. And Kostya Zhu did not fret. He did not argue with uh, his longtime trainer, Johnny Lewis. So we wonder uh, if it is indeed the end of an era uh, for Kostya Zhu. Ricky Hatton with his smothering attack. A dramatic, emotional situation for a former a world champion Kostya Zhu in a draining fight. Al Bernstein standing by right now with the new champion, Ricky Hatton. Al? A jubilant Ricky Hatton. This was an extraordinary night for you. You told us a day or two ago you were watching Sky Channel, and they talked about the fact that if you won, you would be thought of as one of the icons of British sports. And you said you couldn't even imagine it. Now you're living it. Well, for someone like me that, you know, I don't... I don't feel no different to the, you know, to the guy in the crowd. I really don't, you know. It's just I'm so humbled at what I've achieved. I mean, if you'd have said I'd have been filling out a venue of 22,000 and beating somebody the Cotchers cost you a few years ago, I'd have said you were you were barmy. I really would. I just, I just can't believe it. How surprised were you that he didn't come out for round number 12? Uh, I was very surprised, but you know, you know, you can never tell how a fighter's feeling in there, you know. I mean, I was, the last five, I'll have to watch it again on video. I, I took a few shots early on, and at times it did keep me at bay. But, you know, I knew that was going to be the case. But the last five rounds, I felt like I was coming on like a Trojan. And uh, I really had the bit between my teeth for that last round. And who knows, he's got a good corner, a good trainer behind him. Maybe maybe him himself and Mr. Lewis sense that. And that's probably why he, he pulled out. Because he's a proud man. He's got a family and, you know, he's a did, did you, He thought he was three or four rounds behind. Did you think you were ahead by that much? I couldn't really tell. The action was that thick, and sometimes I was taking some FD wallop style so thing. So you can't really tell. But I know the last five or six rounds I was really coming on, and uh, that's what I did. As I was making costly work in the opening rounds, I was conserving a little bit more, you know. And I wanted to really come on down the straight. I wanted to get through the first four to five rounds, smother in, lean on him, sap and drain his strength, and then come on, you know, the latter half. And uh, I really had plenty in the tank in the last five or six rounds. You, you sure did. You were able to get on the inside much better than some people thought you might. Uh, how did you do it, and uh, why were you so effective on the inside with that uppercut? Well, I think it was my speed. I was moving in on him quick. I think Kostya has knocked out a lot of the people that have given ground to him, you know, rather than moving on him, like Shambay Mitchell and Zab Judah, who are... I mean, Zab Judah's won the undisputed welterweight title now, so what a hell of a fighter he is. But, you know... I think when you pull away from Costa, it's the worst thing you can do because his power and his leverages is at the end, the long, at the end of the right hand. Not, it's not a short right hand; it's a long right hand. So, I think closer was safer, you know. So, I think we had, you had to have a lot of bottle and a lot of courage to fight Costa Zoo like that, you know. And I think I showed that, but you know, it worked. I don't think anybody's going to question your courage. Uh, would you fight him again if he decided he wanted to try and do that? Because for the most part, it was a competitive and interesting fight. Very competitive fight. I'd, I'd fight him again because. I knew I was ready for this step up. I knew I was ready for, the, for this step, this level, you know, for for a long time. And don't forget, I've just arrived at my peak. I'm 26, so you know, you know, I don't. Hopefully, I'll be retired by the time I'm Costa's age. But, <laughs> but you know, this, the, the best is yet to come for me. I think. Now you, 
uh, in this fight, uh, you performed extraordinarily well. Did we see the best of Ricky Hatton, or is there more to come? No, I don't think so. I, you know, I got caught with shots at times, and at times he kept me at bay, but a champion like that, like Costa Zou, is, is going to do, but I made it that I moved in on him quick. I tried to smuggle his work, and every shot he caught me with, he didn't really catch me flush because I was riding the punches. I was, I was taking the sting out of the shots. He was catching me with a few, but they were, you know, at the end of the punch, and I was getting a half block and a, you know, a half slip on it. So I was taking the sting out of a lot of his work, I think. Tremendous performance, Ricky. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Hopefully I can come over to the States soon. Right, we want to see you over there, that's for sure. Let's go back to Steve Albert. All right, uh, Al. At the time the fight was stopped, let's take a look at the, the scores. And first of all, the official ringside judges' scores. It was a unanimous decision for Ricky Hatton. Don Ackerman had the biggest disparity. Don from New York, 107-102, all with one round to go. Alfred Asaro from uh, France had at 106-103 for Hatton. And uh, Spain's Manuel Marxalar had it uh, the closest, 105-104 for Ricky Hatton. Here's Press Row, Ron Borges, Boston Globe, had it 105-104 Hatton. John Dillon and Colin Hart, uh, both from England, 106-104. And Colin had it even at the time of uh, the fight stop at 105 to 105. Unbelievable how, how close this fight was. Here's a word right now about an upcoming original series on Showtime. So, as we wind things down from Manchester, England, we take a final look at tonight's result. A night to remember and savor for Ricky the Hitman Hatton and his adoring fans. Hatton defends his hometown turf, upsets the best at 140, one of the premier overall fighters in the world in Costa Zoo. They are rejoicing in Manchester.